Alrighty then, welcome back to Grand Prix World. Um, everything has changed, and that's because I wanted to take a moment just to show you one of the other games I've been uh, running concurrently, just to show you some of the stuff that can happen. So, <clears throat> as you can see, in this game we are playing as um, Minardi, with Heinz Harold Fenson and Shinji Nakano as uh, our drivers. Um, some serious cashola in the bank, and Adrian Newey signed to us. But what I'm really here to show you is um, this. As you can see, we have um, Toyota as uh, an engine supplier, which is not one of the default engine suppliers. It's one of the ones that there is a always the emergency vehicles outside my window. On you go, guys. Um, <clears throat> there's a chance of companies such as Toyota and Renault, I believe, coming in as engine suppliers, and there's also uh, Michelin for the tyres, and I believe it's SO for the fuel. Um, so in this game, that has actually happened. Uh, and as you can see, we've been using our works contract with control over research and development to make an absolute beast of an engine. And bear in mind, we're only at the halfway point in, uh, in this season. If I go over to sponsorship, you can see already I'm 90% signed up for next season, so I believe this is season, I want to say six? Yeah, season six, going into season seven. So within six years, we've really been able to turn the team around, which is obviously what we're hoping to do uh, with our Arrows playthrough. Um, but I just wanted to give you a, an opportunity to see what the end goal would look like. As you can see, the textures look terrible on this view, but they're not actually that blurry on uh, on the race cameras. Um, so we have two sponsorship slots left because the commercial department is much, much bigger than we're working with at Arrows. And um, <clears throat> we could have even more money, to be honest. This is the basic entry level uh, team sponsor, title sponsor. So uh, there are ones that will pay significantly more money than Red Bull. Um, so there is quite a lot possible if you get very fortunate. The other interesting thing about this game is if we look at, um, where are you? The races? Yeah. I forgot to show you previously the race stats. And, um, well you can see we've won every race this season with the exception of Spain, which was won by Celso Moriera. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in the Ferrari. He's a guy who starts the game as a test driver. So what's happened is another team, or, or Ferrari, I, I completely forget, has developed that driver into a race winner. And he has ended up, in the space of six seasons, going from a complete nobody into being Ferrari's lead driver. Very, very impressive stuff. Um, also, what you'll see here is a list of who has won um, the championship in each season. So you see it's changed hands four times. And here's who's won the, the Drivers' Championship. And you are able to go back and look in quite some detail at the stats from each season. Just a, a side note really, just something to um, to show you in terms of what we're working towards and what is possible once you um, have a deeper understanding of how the game works. Anyway, using the magic of modern technology, we will now switch back to our regular playthrough and crack on with qualifying. That's better. So, what do we have to do prior to qualifying? Well, first of all, I really want to take a look at how things are progressing with our sponsors. <clears throat> I should apologise, I do have a bit of a cough at the moment, a bit of a summer cold. Which is why I'm swallowing so much and making so many weird noises, it just can't seem to uh, bugger off. So, taking a look, where are we? Not negotiating with the team sponsor, because why would we? It doesn't make any sense. Now, we have a question to ask ourselves. We can only obtain a partner deal with Ford this season. Um, I have had Arrows be able to pick up a works contract, usually with Peugeot, but again, they're not willing. They're much more willing to provide us with a customer uh, engine than Ford are. As you can see, we need to make two levels of progress um, to get that customer deal. But I'm actually tempted to go with Mugen Honda. Let's take a look at the stats and try and make some sort of decision. So why would I be 
trying to um, go for Mugen Honda. Well, as you can see, Mugen Honda, as would be implied, falls directly between Ford and Peugeot. It really is the middle ground. The Peugeot has a serious, um, comparatively serious deficit when it comes to um, its synergy with, with the race fuel. Additionally, it's heavier than uh, the Mugen Honda engine. Um, its rigidity is um, either lower to or, or equal to. It is more responsive than the Mugen Honda. The Mugen Honda is the least responsive. Um, that's not too big a concern for us since we're not necessarily going to have the chassis to take advantage of that anyway. Um, Peugeot does have slightly better reliability and power um, than the Mugen Honda. And the Mugen Honda is both more powerful and more reliable than the Ford. <clears throat> Comparing that to the engine we have at the moment, and you can see that actually, aside from weight, the engine we have currently is better than the Ford engine, or equal to. I mean, there is a difference as well in, in fuel economy, but to be honest, the Hart engine isn't actually terrible, but we can only get a customer deal with them, so we will always be paying for that engine. Same with Mechachrome. I don't believe Mechachrome offer partner deals. Um, and while the engine is very, very reliable, um, it doesn't have great rigidity. It's got a slight heat problem. The power is better than the engines around it, but the cost is commensurately higher. Ferrari and Mercedes, we're not going to be able to chase. I genuinely believe that What's going to benefit us most is, first of all, rigidity and weight, but also we need the uh, the fuel synergy um, as we're going to have a substandard race fuel uh, next season, I believe. Likewise, we could attain that by going with Ford, but Ford generally attracts slightly more competition, and we do need that extra little bit of power and reliability. So I'm going to put this 45% of our marketing staff on talking to Mugen Honda. It might be they offer us a two season deal, which we wouldn't necessarily say no to. Um, so we'll kick Ford out, bring Mugen Honda in. We still want to bring Esso along to the race. <clears throat> and can we get Bridgestone to attend? No, we can't. So we're spending the money anyway. We're using the staff, so let's try and find somebody to um, to bring along. What sort of staffing levels are we at? I'm going to pull 2% off the overall quality. It's not going to make a difference in this case. And I'm going to try and reclaim... Yeah. That's only a a one level anyway, 15% should be plenty. I'm going to take that 9% and I'm going to try and get us a, a sneaky sponsor, just one that we can pick up quite easily. I think I'm going to go for Intercond because they work with us at the moment anyway, so we should have some level of understanding. And we will invite Intercond along and see if they are prepared to offer us some cash money to do the stuff what we do. Um, in terms of other progress, still three rounds in, Bridgestone aren't all that interested, but again, we aren't bringing them to the race. Progress is discouraging with Esso, but um, we will get there. We have 13 rounds to, to go through it, so now we really need to be picking up money sponsors since we're not going to get that works deal um, for the engine, and we're not going to get a team sponsor. It's very, very good we managed to retain Pedro de Niz, because otherwise the hole in our budget would probably put us out of business. Um, it really, really is important that um, we replace the money that we are technically losing. Plus also what you can see up here is because the team couldn't get a title sponsor, we sold the title sponsor slot to a regular sponsor and that doubles their money. So obviously if you're going to have to do that as we are, you want to get one of the higher level five or four star um, big players really to sign with you. Um, I'm thinking of chasing hmm, Canal Plus maybe? It goes with our livery. 
Tell you what, let's knock that down to 5%. Sorry, you're not coming to Argentina anymore, Intercond. Um, this deal could take a while to pull off. And I'm thinking we should try and get our foot in the door early. I'm going to take 5% off you and 5% off you. I don't like splitting my resources like that, to be honest, but we'll gradually keep putting more money on this this Canal Plus deal. And sometimes companies just like you, and even with a small amount of staff assigned, you can um, very quickly progress in negotiating your deal. Hopefully we have a good synergy with Mugen um, Honda, and they just happen to like us. Either way, it's good to have a plan. That calls for a beer. Let's do that. And now we'll take a look at, um, I don't remember if we uh, went over the news already. I think we did. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Okay, so skipping over from that. Options to replace Mika Salo. We've still got Taranasuke Takagi. Shinji Nakano, let's see if he's changed his mind. He has. That's very interesting. Now he wants a slightly shorter deal. That may make the rest of our um, investigations rather moot, actually. But just as a backup, let's see. Let's see if Esteban Tuero is interested in a three season deal. He is. Now the thing about Esteban Tuero is he develops very, very well. Very, very well indeed. His morale is very low though. Obviously he's driving for Minardi, he's not particularly uh, keen on developing, so his stats are unlikely to go up uh, this season with them or next season with us. But he is a driver who usually ends up at a top team and he is very young. Um, I won't sign that deal with him just now, we'll keep him as an option, because Shinji Nakano is much better developed, and he's already gained a skill point over last time we looked at him, I believe. So those are our two options, <clears throat> simply because we're going to need the extra money. Um, if either of those fall through, or both of them, then we've also got Takagi we can ask. And if maybe we sign a big money deal in the next few races, not very likely, um, we can maybe chase someone like Alex Voort or Jarno Trulli. So we'll come back to the drivers. We've signed for commercial next season, we've got Mike Gascoigne coming, and we need to replace John Barnard. Now Harvey hasn't waited for us, so really we're, we're quite limited in our ability to progress here. What I could do, actually, is sign Esteban Tuero straight away and try and retain John Barnard. I tell you what, if we can sign John Barnard now, because Tuero is offering us 3.9 million a season and we can always fire him later on, let's see if he'll sign for 2.5 million. That would give us a net profit of 1.4 million, <clears throat> which isn't bad for a between-turns work. I think that's probably the best we're going to do. Yeah, I'm, ha I'm happy with that deal, I think. Come on, John. No. Okay, so the team hasn't signed enough sponsors yet. It's good he's still an option, but I'm very aware that we could lose out on someone like Gary Anderson. We're not going to sign Patrick Head. He's far too expensive. Ross Braun really is a bit rich for our blood because we'll have to bump that up to about three million. Actually, let's see if he'll sign for 3.08 and we'll give him a, a championship bonus of a million. Try him for one season. Yeah, the team has no chance to win a championship, so he's not interested. Likewise, then, Gazza Anderson would be our second choice uh, from Barnard. We'll try and get him for two seasons. Okay, the contract is too long. So, we have some irons in the fire, you could say. 
uh, looking over at the mechanics, we were going after Edwards, weren't we? Um, Carl Gaiden's a little bit too expensive. Cal Shaw signed elsewhere. We're not interested in, in making no progress at all in this field. So let's see if... I can't remember if the contract was too long or not long enough. We'll try him for three seasons. I've got a feeling that he wanted longer. Yes. Okay, we're going to sign that straight away. I'm not interested in fighting for somebody else. So we have most of our department heads in place. That's really good news, actually. We just need to, especially with our morale problem, it'd be good if we could keep John Barnard. So hopefully Esteban Tuero doesn't sign with somebody else while we're pissing about, and everything will be good there. Now, unfortunately, what you can see here is both our race cars picked up some damage. The green tick here means the damage isn't serious enough to uh, prevent us racing if we can't repair it, which is good news because we only have three spare parts, we can only build two more, and we have very limited mechanics. Um, however, something to bear in mind is that damage will always make your car perform worse than a, a similar or greater percentage of wear. So. Basically, 5% damage on your car does more damage to your race performance than a significant amount of, of wear. So damage should always be your priority. The other problem we've got <clears throat> is at the moment we couldn't even test. Our cars are so unreliable that during the course of qualifying in the race, they are worn out 100%. And that means they're completely useless. Um, we couldn't even run them around for some test laps, which we could afford to do theoretically but uh, now we can't you see this red car symbol here means that they're unable to do any testing how are we going to deal with that well we're going to have to make some spare parts oh look at that we can make three spare parts although it is costing us fifty seven thousand five hundred dollars every time we do that's going to do our budget no favors now, we can't do any testing until we repair some of the wear on the car, which uses spare parts, which cost 57 grand. That wear would come straight back on again if we did some testing, and then we'd have to use more spare parts to put it right. So, the strategy I'm going to do is Mika Salo is going to switch to race car 3. And we're going to put the test driver in car 2, because it doesn't matter that his car is not ready to race. Then, we're going to repair car one and we're going to repair as much wear on Denise's car as possible okay then see the problem is that that's going to use two spare parts really inefficiently and there's no guarantee next round we'll still be able to build three because our morale is likely to go down unless we pull out a good performance I'm inclined to say, nah, he won't make it to the end of the race if we don't repair him. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna take a risk here and repair Salo's car to the best of our ability. Um, that wasn't a spare parts issue; that was a manpower issue. You can see up here we have zero percent of our uh, allocated work time remaining, so his car is going to be one percent worn. Uh, when he takes it out on track. That could be the difference between uh, making it to the end and a failure, unfortunately. Progress on the chassis is now useless because the uh, the regulations for next season have come out and John Barnard has designed a car that doesn't conform to them. So we have to cancel all of that hard work and begin again. And now you can see that cross has been replaced by a tick, which means we're within the regulations. Progress on our diffuser is really, really slow as well. We might get one um, upgrade package out if we are very lucky. And our efforts to improve the reliability of our electronics are failing rather badly. I'm inclined to take everyone off that project and take some DNFs this season to produce a better car for next season. Uh, we really need them to pick up the pace. Um, this is good, but it doesn't fix any of the reliability problems, so we're going to have to keep our fingers crossed that we are able to uh, keep our cars in the game. We've already set up our sponsors. Let's take a look at our race strategy. 
Um, I feel comfortable keeping the guys on that kind of level of performance. There is no setup work to do because we did no testing, so this is the raw uh, setup provided by the race engineers. So you can see these numbers are totally different to the last track, which you would expect. So we're going to accept their setup and not provide any boosts. <clears throat> we're going to put them both on the soft tyre because I believe the hard tyre didn't actually do us any favours in the, the last race. So they'll both be using the soft compound. <clears throat> Still no one on car security because we've got nothing worth nicking. And we're going to we're going to look now for active suspension on the McLaren because that will provide the biggest gain possible. And in terms of performance, we're going to start looking at Sauber given that the last race we were far outperforming the Stuarts actually and Sauber, Jordan were more of our uh, immediate uh, opponents as it were. So with that said, let us dive into qualifying. Stefan Sarazan will be performing another, uh, another race for um, the Pros team, so Trulli must still be out. Okay, so great weather for qualifying. Um, let's take a look and see if there's any chance of rain, possibly. Yeah, we're not in the prime operating temperature for our tyres, but whatever, this, this track is very, very dry. The temperature is as high as it's going to get. Do you know, yeah, we'll get we'll get a banker in and then we'll take a break, come back and see what we can do. Um, Denise, you can go out first because frankly you just did better last time. And then once he comes out the end of the pit lane, we'll put Salo out. Hopefully we don't get traffic. We can get a banker lap in and then we'll let the others do the heavy lifting until there's a bit more rubber down on track. I'll see you for the fast lap. Okay, so Denise is about to start his flying lap. What you can see is we've been joined on track by a Tyrrell Luminardi, both Williams, both Ferraris, and a Benetton. And now a McLaren's come out. What that's told me is that the big teams are putting all their eggs in one basket right now. They are obviously seeing the benefit of going out on track immediately. Conditions are generally good. Um, we aren't getting the best out of our tyres just yet. The Niz has already uh, got some wear and tear on his engine. Um, however, the fact that the big teams are out there shows it's a good time to be out there. Um, they don't always make every call perfectly, but it's pretty conclusive when, you know, six of the top eight cars are are out on track at the moment getting some laps in. It shows there's um, benefit to be had. Nothing particularly interesting to report otherwise, but we're going to go back to the timing board and see uh, that's the Niz on a 127.179 so we'll call him in and Salo on a 127.820 Salo is still failing to uh, match Deniz's performance however very encouraging is we have uh, it is Ricardo Tossa on uh, a 131.129 in the Tyrrell um, but if you see actually Deniz is not that far at all off um, Villeneuve's opening lap time. Very, very encouraging. I don't know where Deniz has been finding his performance lately, but I'm very, very encouraged by it. Um, so I'm feeling even better about having retained him, to be honest. Um, again, there is sort of, let's not say a random element, but uh, there is variation in driver performance. As you can see here, with uh, Michael Schumacher putting in a 151.888, that's a full 20 seconds slower than Esteban Tuero in the Minardi. He must have gone off or had some sort of misfortune out on track. Um, very interesting, but the track is already getting a little bit faster. Um, Frentzen on a 126.9 uh, is not too far behind uh, Hakkinen and Irvine, both on the high 126s as well. The, the track is clearing out again. It does make me wonder if now is a good time to try and improve on the same set of, of scrub tyres. And um, then we'll keep six laps for the end of the session. I'll tell you what, let's let's actually do that. So again, we'll put the Niz out first. He can stay on the scrub tyres. 
maybe I'm I'm still not entirely sure this is part of our learning process I'm still not entirely sure if sending him out on scrubs makes sense sometimes they're faster on the second lap often they're only good for one flying lap historically um, but we've got nothing really to lose at the moment and everything to gain so off you go Pedders and Salo can go as well. He's probably going to get tied up behind, uh, I believe that's Coulthard. But he'll just have to deal with it, girlfriend. Um, yeah, then McLaren should pull out a gap anyway, to be honest, before um, the flying lap begins. Uh, we'll follow them round on the qualifying lap and see if anyone else passes. And we've got a Prost out on track, just beginning a flying lap as well. One of the Stewarts has broken cover too. Is that Sauber setting a fast lap? No, he's not. So, <clears throat> Deniz has got all the track in the world at the moment. I'm just hoping that no one, especially a Minardi or a Tyrrell or another Stewart, doesn't come out of the pit lane just as he's beginning his fast lap. That would be uh, kicking the bollocks with a spiky boot, frankly. Um, but we're going to have to roll the dice at some point, I, I suppose. 47 minutes of the session left, so we're already 13 minutes in. That's game minutes, which runs slightly faster. Um, we'll get both of them now putting the boot down. Uh, we're still holding on to 6th and 8th. We've been split by uh, Coulthard's McLaren. So he's now on an in-lap, actually. So as you can see, he's slowed off a little bit. That'll leave the Niz plenty of room to play with. Um, also, John Newhouse is uh, back out on track as well. Um, he's going to get caught up by Minardi, which hopefully we don't reach... Um, before the end of Diniz's lap, <clears throat> although that would just be our luck. Diniz is um, is looking strong actually here. Uh, I'm watching him go around on the bottom right screen, bottom left screen there, not seeing any particular mistakes, um, not seeing any wobbles or anything like we often see with Salo. So hopefully we could be good for qualifying well inside the top ten here. Obviously it's early days, and we have to get them out at the right time later. Yeah, he wasn't able to improve, so we're going to begin working on the assumption that they need... Although Salo did improve, not enough to beat Coulthard, but he took two tenths off his time, so... That's odd. Again, drivers are, are unique, that's one of the best things about this game, and the same car with the same setup and same tyres, same fuel load, won't perform the same in... The hands of two different drivers categorically so what we're learning is oh well it looks like we were smart any cars that haven't got out on track yet I'm wondering if we should put them out on a set of fresh ones before the track gets wet that's what we're gonna do we're gonna get Denis to put his boot down to get back to the garage this could really benefit us it also make for a very short video because obviously if the rain sets in, it's not going to dry out again by the uh, end of the session. So we're really going to... Uh, let's put three laps worth of fuel in Deniz. Out you go, Cocker. Likewise, this could be our last dry lap of the session. It's already getting damp on the track. Off you go, lads. Uh, I'm going to get them both going flat out on the out lap as well as um, the fast lap, uh, simply because we want to get them round as quickly as humanly possible. We don't want the track getting soaking wet. As you see, there's already a bit of wobble, bit of a wobble for Deniz as well. Um, the track is getting, I wouldn't say slippery, but it's getting uh, mildly moist in Top Gear terminology. Um, there's still a chance of getting a fast lap in, but uh, the chances are already diminished. I'm just hoping that a fresh set of tyres will do, particularly the Niz. I'm not expecting much from Salo, but watch him prove me wrong, I hope. Um, we just want to get them around. I don't care if they bin it at the uh, on their in-lap, to be honest. I just want them to... Uh, See, I, I just see so much potential for Deniz. If he can take uh, a tenth and a half out of um, his lap time, he will pip Villeneuve as he did last qualifying. 
That'll sneak him in behind Schumacher. I don't expect him to beat Schumacher's time or Fissy Keller's. So, seventh would be great for us. It really, really would. Um, that would have us out qualifying both the Jordans as well as the Saubers. Uh, Denise's lap is looking relatively clean so far. I've not seen a wobble. Wobbles obviously will take time out of the lap. So, you really... That's, that's the balance you've got to strike between how aggressive do you let your drivers be versus how smooth, you know, often a less, aggress a less aggressive um, strategy can produce a faster lap simply because they're not messing up so much. Deniz wasn't able to improve. I'm, I'm not terribly surprised, but I'm glad we took the, uh, the chance. Sarlo has improved again. So that has us 8th and 9th instead of 8th and 10th. Um... He's a full 10th in front of uh, Ralph Schumacher's Jordan. I don't see anyone below us going faster. But we do have uh, Hill coming round now on, uh, I believe it's his fast lap. So let's see what he can do. Did he set a time there? No, he hasn't. Okay, so this is his first fast lap. That's a serious problem. Um, they're in the position now where basically Hill's not going to get a clean fast lap. He's already been held up by uh, the steward there. He's going to run into another steward if he's not careful. And I'm not entirely sure what the performance deficit is, Stuart to, uh, to Jordan. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. But everyone's desperately scrabbling now. Um, let's take a look, see if any problems have been reported. No, everyone's perfectly happy. Excellent. I'm going to take a look at how the, the track's doing. But what I would expect to happen is I'm going to cut the video in a moment. And we'll wait for the track to rubber in some more. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it will... Uh, the rain will stop. The track's just gone to being uh, wet tyres only, really. So um, and that would be... Certainly intermediates. I'm wondering actually if that could be full wets. I think it's a bit light yet for full wets. But it's certainly an intermediate kind of afternoon. Um, I'm going to sit out the rain and I'll be back if it dries up. If not, we'll jump back in before the end of the session just to take a look where everyone is. Just a quick update for you. The rain has stopped. Damon Hill wasn't able to uh, split us, so we are still sat 8th and 9th. That's 32 minutes of the session left, which means the track is going to dry out. Cars are still out there putting rubber down as well, so I'm going to say in probably 15 game minutes we're going to put our boys back out on track on fresh tyres and uh, maybe, just maybe, we'll get lucky because the big teams are using up all their laps very, very quickly. Um, so join me then. Then being now, or almost now, as you can see, the track has started to dry up. It's still not really all that dry. Track temperature is a bit low, but we are getting some rubber down on the, the main line. Our rivals are using up all their um, their laps very very quickly, so we probably will see some guys begin to um, begin to improve their lap times now. I'm still going to hold off, and we'll probably go out with about five minutes to go, five or six minutes to go, um, hoping against hope that it doesn't rain again, and um, maybe we'll just be lucky enough to pip uh, new house, as it were. See you soon. Just a brief non-related update while we wait for the track conditions to improve. Unfortunately, as you know, uh, we're two days away now from F1 2015 launching officially. Unfortunately, I've had an email that the computer I've ordered um, will be delayed till early next week. So while Simon and I will do something for launch night, the co-op season will be delayed by only a few days, I would expect, but it will be delayed. However, do go over to Higher Playing Games for launch night. Um, I'm guessing the video will be up first thing Saturday morning, uh, Friday morning even, um, and we will have some content for you on whether you should buy the game, what condition it's in, and what's changed really. Um, oh, I've just seen the track conditions are actually uh, beginning to turn on us again. Um, with that in mind, I wanted to wait until there's a bit more rubber on the main line. Maybe we'll put um, we'll put Salo out. Salo can go do his last laps, and hopefully, 
hope against hope. Because unfortunately track temperature is dropping slightly. Um, we will be able to get some extra rubber down for Deniz's lap. As you can see, I have started to favour Deniz over Salo. Um, that's basically a byproduct of the fact that he's desperately outperforming Salo at the moment. Um, so the natural thing to do is to begin to put your eggs in one basket, especially when points have such a massive effect on team morale for us that um, if only one driver's got a chance of of gaining points, then that driver's going to have the full benefit of everything we can provide to him. That includes putting Salo out like an Eddie Irvine or a Rubens Barrichello to uh, warm up the track for uh, the main man himself. Um, also, it's in our interest to keep Dinners happy now. We know we're going to have him next season. So, uh, there we go. The track conditions have improved enough. We're going to wait for this Sauber to go through. And then we'll try and block this Williams for a laugh, really. Oh, he's coming. So, let's get some final laps in, lads. Salo's currently on his hot lap. He's going to come up on that Tyrrell. That's probably going to balls his lap. Um, I guess we'll see. Let's switch and see how the pass goes. It's not going to make it this lap. Sorry, this corner. Um, yeah, it's hard to say, actually. I think the tool doesn't look too bad in the corners, actually. So, you know, well done there. That's Harvey Postlethwaite working his magic for you. But yeah, he is he is impeding us towards the end of the lap. I've got a feeling that might have some sort of an effect, but we have got past. Has he improved his time? Yes, he has. Quite significantly, actually. He's now one-tenth uh, ahead of Pedro Deniz. Can Deniz improve his lap is the question. So he's now beginning his fast lap. Let's check the track conditions really quick. Yep, same as they were. But we do have that extra rubber down on the main line. We'll switch the camera over to Denise so we can watch him flying around. What we need is two or three tenths, really, out of um, Denise's lap. That isn't impossible, given uh, how big a jump Salo made under these conditions. So, provided that that Sauber we're coming up on doesn't get in our way prior to the end of the lap. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Deniz could pull something out of the bag for us here, and if we can out-qualify that Benetton, possibly even if we can get in front of Frentzen, a top six qualifying position starting. So, what happened there was a pop-up asking me if I want to upgrade my fucking Java um, crashed the game completely. Now, a professional would reshoot that entire video, um, but you've probably noticed through my work with Simon that I'm not actually all that professional. Um, I also feel that there is some there is some interesting dynamic in that video where you can see sort of track evolution in motion and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I did consider just skipping through a fast qualifying, but the chances of us replicating such a strong result were basically zero. Uh, we would perform much worse in qualifying if we weren't manually controlling it. So rather than sort of screw the playthrough by doing that when there's a problem, I will reshoot any videos that crash or have a problem, but it will screw with the uh, the schedule. Now I promised a video today, which is Wednesday. Um, this video will go out, but it will not be in the official playlist, and I'll try and label it in such a way that anyone in the future times watching this uh, series of, of videos, um, making sure that they aren't confused. So think of it as, a, I don't know, a spin-off of a spin-off. That, that, this episode isn't canon, let's put it that way. Um, and so I will reshoot qualifying and a race this weekend. So you'll get a qualifying on Saturday, a race on Sunday, and um, on that basis, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you will join me then, and eventually I will get the hang of this video making business, and we won't have so many fuck-ups. Cheers.